I learned to fly a plane, I'm CEO of NowVapSumo.com, speaking Hebrew, and I'm a pretty good boxer. I'm not gonna claim I'm an expert whatsoever, but I wanna share how I've evolved and learned how to learn to help you learn really anything faster. Let's go. Why learn how to learn? Now think about this, if you can learn how to do Hebrew or learning how to do flying, when you're doing something in your business or even in relationships, don't you think those skills transfer over? Now, let me give you an example. A friend of mine recently became a father and I asked him, I said, hey, um, so how many books have you read? Have you hired any other coaches who are fathers? How have you approached actually learning how to be a father? Like watch YouTube videos? And I'm like, no, I'm winging it. So for the kid's birthday, I gave him a, a gift card for therapy. <laughs> you can wing a lot of these things and you could figure it out on your own. Or you can put some structure and concepts in an order to actually master any of the things you want. One of my favorite books on this is actually Mastery by Robert Greene. And not the Robert Greene you're thinking about. This is an old school book. Uh, and what he talks about a lot of these things is that there is a process on how to learn stuff. And you have to be responsible at how you're actually adjusting your learning to be able to master it. And let me walk through more examples of how I've been able to do that specifically. I have been learning how to do YouTube. So when I started out in YouTube last year, it was me on my phone just doing this. And some of y'all watched it, but it wasn't really strategic. It wasn't really organized. And so over the past 18 months, I've hired experts. I've built out a team and I've actually learned how to run YouTube. And so there's a lot of different components in that. And through learning how to do YouTube, it's actually been really impactful about how to run AppSumo, which is a hundred person company. So some of the things that might seem smaller, learning soccer, learning how to do basketball, learning how to do jump rope, that might actually be an amazing skill that you can transfer over to actually more significant or serious parts of your life. Now, what's really interesting is how do you actually learn how to learn? Learning how to learn, let's go over actually how do you approach learning? There's two key things I really have to start it off with. Number one is the why. And you guys have all heard that before. For me, with learning Hebrew, for instance, my father's from Israel, his family's over from Israel, and my father passed away. And one of my dreams is to be able to speak fluently with his family over there, and then maybe one day speak to my dad in heaven. And I know that's kind of a crazy thought, but that is a really strong motivator. When tomorrow I have class at 10 a.m., I don't particularly want to do it. It is fun and I like my teacher. I remind the why and that gives me that motivation to keep going forward with it. Let's just say you want to be a video editor, for instance. Why don't you write out your fantasy? So like in five years, I can be video editing for Noah Kagan. Maybe that. Or maybe you want to be making something for Pixar. But have a fantasy and put that out on your mirror or on your phone or out on the wall, wherever it is you're going to see it regularly. And that will give you some excitement about, oh man, I know right now I'm doing some of the grunt work, but that can lead to something a lot better. Now, the second thing that's really critical about learning how to learn is taking responsibility for learning. So this was something that was kind of interesting for me because when we learn in school, you just take what you're given. And what I realized through Hebrew is about six years ago when I started this process, I had a teacher and I just went to, I called up the local uh, Jewish group and I said, hey, who's the teacher? They gave me the teacher. And one day I, she was gone and so I was like, well, I wanna keep learning. So I called another teacher and that next teacher was actually better. And it wasn't about the teachers and comparing them, but it was actually taking a step back and realizing, oh, I have to be responsible for what I wanna learn and how I wanna learn it. And it's on me to make that change, not just take it whatever way that these people wanna be providing it. You're responsible for saying, what do I need to improve these types of skills? If you want more videos from Uncle Noah on your business journey, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I put out three juicy business videos to help you every single week. So let's break down maybe learning something specifically that'll help you really in your process of anything you wanna be learning. So in terms of learning how to be a CEO of a company, I've really only run a company up to around 20 people. So now is 124, we'll be at 162 people uh, by the end of this year, which is, is a lot. And how do you actually do that? So the why is clear. I want to run AppSumo. I want to help be people become entrepreneurs. I want to be a great CEO. That's really clear. Secondly, I'm being responsible for my learning. I'm not blaming it on other people. I'm not just like, let me wing CEO and see how it goes. I want to be a great CEO. So how do you actually measure what a great CEO is? So you have to decide what is the goal or outcome you want to be doing. And that is a subjective thing that I'm deciding myself, but choose what kind of goal you want for yourself. Now for me to learn how to be a CEO, let's just break down that process. So to be a great CEO, what do I actually need to know to get there? How are you getting advice from people who've already been there and done that? A lot of times we try to figure it out, but let me be clear to you. None of us are unique. Most of these problems, everyone has gone through. We've gone through being lonely. We've gone through being CEOs. We've gone through going to Mars, almost. And so in how to be an actual CEO, one of the key things is go find people. And I found a guy named Raj who's already done a lot of the things that I want to do. And now he gets to actually just give me the advice to the key questions I have. And so on a bi-weekly basis, I'm basically shortcutting by getting a lot of the experience that he's already gone through. So who can you find that's already gone to the promised land? Are you actually studying? Now every week in my calendar, I have one hour to study leadership. There is unlimited content on YouTube, on hbr.org or any website, as well as books that have a lot of that material. So some, one of the books I'm reading literally today, and hopefully we'll have it on screen here, is Work Rules. This is a guy who ran it at Google. Most of the, all the amazing information is out there, but are you actually putting in the time to study it? Now, not just study it, but taking notes and say, how am I gonna take this information and integrate it? 
get feedback. So this has been probably one of the most powerful tools and I always think of feedback as a gift. So in my meetings, almost every single time I'm asking at the end of the meeting, can you give me feedback on how the meeting went and how I'm actually behaving? And I will tell you, there are so many times, today I even found out, no, I'm not including people in decisions. And that actually came up twice today. So I wrote it down in my leadership notes. And now it's something that I'm gonna be more mindful as I'm behaving as a leader to be even more effective. So one of the things that I saw uh, that Serena Williams tennis coach said is that if you wanna build confidence, you have to be on the court. Lately, I've been loving to do home gym workouts. And so I've been studying how to actually coordinate your workout, meaning like what are the actual things you do in what order, how many reps and how many times. Uh, and so the way I'm approaching that specifically is I'm setting up a workout and every single Wednesday I do the workout and I ask at the end of the workout, what kind of feedback do you have? So in today's workout, I found out that people didn't know which order to go in for the different rotations of sections in the workout. And the previous week, someone said, well, you did a lot of arms, but the legs are a bigger muscle. And I was like, huh, that's pretty cool. So if I wanted to go further on this, I'd probably go and try to find an expert or go to classes and talk to people who are doing different programming and say, how have you thought about that? And be able to integrate that back into my own learning. Next up, really, it takes time to learn things. I think that's something that we expect if we're playing squash or if I'm a CEO or if you're learning how to do video editing or whatever it is you're taking on, you're like, I should be an expert immediately. I should be as famous as this person. It's like, you've, you've done it for a month. Give yourself a break. And I think that's something that uh, all of us can really benefit from is just be a little bit more graceful and kind with yourself. And don't be so hard that you're not an expert immediately, but realize like this is actually a journey. This is gonna take you 10 years to become an expert or even longer. So find things that you wanna learn and be patient about taking time with that. Next up, in your learning process, change things up and see how that goes. So what do I mean by that? So with CEO as well, more specifically, let's just talk about Hebrew. Uh, I had a teacher and then I was like, let me try another teacher. And then what I noticed with Hebrew is that I actually needed some structure. And I was like, let me try structure. So I found a site called oldpen.com that has a very structured course uh, of material. Mix up the different ways you're learning the information to be an expert in something or learning anything. And that will actually find out where like, hey, I want structure, which I have once a week. And then two to three days a week, I do audio learning through Duolingo. And I find that to be a really great combination to really elevate my Hebrew skills. Two other things about learning things fast that I really wanna highlight is practicing versus playing. So I've been playing squash uh, and what's really interesting is I watch a lot of videos, so I'm studying it. But there's a very big difference from studying it versus actually being on the court and playing a game. Now, my brother's taught me this thing about practicing versus playing, is that when you actually go play the game, you're not really learning the game. You're just playing the game. And so if you want to be good at mountain biking, if you want to be good at CEO, if you want to be good at squash, you have to actually go and practice the back end. So go and practice meetings if you want to be great at meetings or practice optimizing your schedule. Or in squash, go and just do backhands over and over and over. Now, when you actually get on the court and you're playing a game, play a game. And I think that's a really important separation and distinction that I think a lot of us may make mistakes on. We're like, well, I'm just going to go play it and see how it goes. It's like, that's not actually practicing or really developing the skills to be excellent when you're playing the game. Last thing I got to say about learning is find someone to support you on accountability on a regular basis for your learning. So every single Friday, we have a thing called Senior Leadership Team uh, where Chad and Eamon give me feedback on my leadership. Now, this is clear accountability where they're saying, Noah, are you doing a good job as a leader? So there's really two questions that they ask me every week. Number one, are you moving the business forward? And number two, what is the top focus and how are you doing against that? And so for yourself, who is holding you accountable? And I will tell you, uh, like Neville, who's trying to do work on his body, or myself, I have a CEO coach. Are you paying someone or having someone who will hold you accountable and you're gonna listen to what they actually say? And commit to one year of saying, I'm gonna learn everything I can to have this level of outcome and try the different things we talked about in this video. You commit to that for at least one year. We talked about the law of 100, maybe this is even 100 days. I promise you that'll be something, one, you'll have a benefit in that. Plus you'll learn how to learn so you can apply that to a lot of different skills. What's scary definitely becomes easy. Coming into some of these meetings as a CEO and people are looking to me and people are listening to me, uh, it's scary, but the more that you put time on the court, the more you're actually setting it, the more that you're learning it, the more that you're practicing it, the more that you're continually aiming to improve it, uh, the less scary a lot of this stuff becomes. And think of learning maybe as a little bit of a stair. So you're gonna go up, you're gonna plateau, and that's what it talks about in Mastery by Robert Greene, you plateau. And so if you can get through those plateaus and you get through those boredoms, you can really become an expert at anything as long as you can keep persevering and honestly making it enjoyable for yourself. Like if you're doing all this stuff and it's not fun and there's no reward, there's no burrito at the end of the stick, like how are you gonna be motivated to do it? So find things and maybe think of it as a practice. So if you like this video about learning, you will definitely like this video for my channel as well. I really think you're gonna enjoy it and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I love you. I wanna make sure I see you out there. Beep, beep.